when we read the libretto and we listened to the music, uh, we wanted to set it in the 18th century as it is supposed to be. And we started to read about Jean de La Fontaine because he was a very important French writer in those days. And he made some stories about animals that were actually speaking about humans. And by listening to the music, we realized that there was something there. They, they all look like birds in a way. Mm -hmm. They all look like chickens and roosters and turkeys. So we said, maybe that's the way to tell the story to, in a comedic style. What's important is that the codification that is in the opera, you know, could not be done in a modern setting. People do not react the same way, you know. A girl is not going to listen to what her father says. That's not true. <laughs> it will never happen again. So, uh, for us, it was important to keep the mm. period. It's also a festival about ancient music, and it was important to keep the setting of ancient music. What is extremely important, it is a great play, it is great music, but it is a play. It is a play in music, and this is why it was so successful when it was created, which is also what it makes, it makes it so difficult to produce because it's extremely intricate for the singers, for the musicians, for us as a creative team to make sure that with six characters, you make a three hours of music entertaining every second. So for us, to make it an 18th century play was important, but if you just keep it as an 18th century play, nobody nowadays understands the codification of the 18th century. What is the social status of a noble towards a merchant, from a, a younger girl towards an older sister? This is codification nobody understands. So what we need is to make sure that it speaks to the audience today. And to do that, we went back to what Jean de La Fontaine was doing and a lot also of English artists, you know, when they transform humans into animals because it allows you to say things that you would not <coughs> say if they would be only humans. It was also the period where Marie Antoinette, you know, did Le Petit Trianon. She wanted to be a farmer, you know, this queen created a little farm and she wanted to play the, the, the gentleman, not the gentleman, but the lady farmer. It was very important to keep the easy life of the farmer. And it's interesting to keep those animals as easy, an easy life. In fact, we see in the back where we see, you know, the knife, which are going to cut all their heads at some point, okay, being in the back as a sign of threat, but their life continues. And this we can relate to it even as a modern audience every day. So we did, decided to inspire ourselves to do the set of a chicken co-op, a place where chicken are raised, but an 18th century co-op based on 18th century engravings. So this is the setting. It looks like a black and white engraving of, 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 a, of a place where chicken lives. And as Renaud was saying, the life is easy going, but lurking in the background, there is this big knife that will eventually kill all the chickens because this is the fate of chicken. And Fidalma became <clears throat> The business of Fidalma was to lay eggs, as the sisters is as well. And the father, Geronimo, is actually taking care of this business. This is his business because he's supposed to be a merchant in Italy. So we decided that he's taking the business of producing eggs to a different level. So we play with, with that. We have fun with it. We, we are trying to use some of the characteristic of the different birds sometimes and sometimes we go to the human side of it what is very important to keep in mind is that they are humans the birds is only the projection of uh, is to put the distance in their humanity and this is important but it's a comedy and it needs to stay a comedy if it becomes a very heavy drama then we miss the track